All right, I'm making another video. I'm going to try and speak up a little bit so you can hear me. I'm working on wiring today. I pulled out my extension cord. I'm ready to solder, but I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about what I've been figuring out. Uh, I've done lots of wiring on this bus, 71, and it's the Camp Mobile. Uh, the guy before me did some funny things, but to get you to know where I'm at, the Samba. The Samba is the number one place to go for help. And then the Bentley's manual, this is the service manual, is the next thing you need. As far as where I've come from, looking at my Type 2 on uh, August of 70, which is the 71 model. Of course, the car was made before it was produced on, for sale. So it's a 71 model, but it was made in 1970. Um, this is the full wiring guide, and it can be confusing as heck when you first look at it. But with my model, some of the others look different. But with this one, it's pretty simple. Headlights, like headlight switch. This is my blinkers. Um, you know, a little fan for your motor or whatever. Alternator, tail lights. This one's laid out pretty simple. Uh, and then what you can do is go to the Samba and get a color printout which saves you a little bit of headache, so you don't have to read the little BL for black or whatever. Um, and then it tells you the head, this turn signal switch is what I'm working on currently. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry if I'm shaking. I've been upside down for a while now. Okay, well, either way, that says E2. You look down, E2 is your turn signal and headlight dimmer switch, which I guess means your you know, brights. And so the problem I was having is that it wasn't working at all. So when I got in here and started pulling it apart, I actually went to a junkyard and pulled out a second switch. And that's from a 74. It has fewer wires than mine does. And so I got in here and realized that the guy, I guess, previously had replaced this switch. But he didn't feel like pulling the wires out and just putting it in new, so he hog pinned them all together. Same color assemblies though. Brown and white is brown and white and so forth. When you get under there, and you look, uh, it's so blurry, but there's a five piece connector where all the coordinating colors come out the other side. But the colors that come from my switch to go in correspond with each one. This one has five on it. When I got in there, I found one that has six. That's because my brown wires that come out for ground go into there. So I've got the sixth one saving me finding that one. Um, one thing I did was underneath here, there's four screws. And they hold your steering wheel in place. So I pulled them all out. And got in there. And I found a brown and white wire that was not connected. And so I searched and searched, researched, looked over the uh, wiring guide. The wiring guide said it should go somewhere. Dimmer light switch. So I started getting underneath the dash here. I'll show you in a second. I'm going to try to fasten that. But, uh, I mean, it obviously went somewhere. I plugged everything in, had it all nice and functional turn my key which I've left on here um, when I turn the key I'm gonna use the blinker I had found out that these wires had come off so I'm about to solder that's what my extension cords for so I'm gonna solder this back together um, I've discovered that there's one spot right there and one spot right there so then I deduced by turning on my key turning the blinker touching that to the spot I thought I went which I was right it goes down on the bottom there. And then I still, after connecting the brown one, couldn't get my brights when I sat there. And when you do your brights, it pushes down and it clicks that and touches. And I wasn't getting any brights. So I turned on my brights, turned on my key, and I sat here and was touching it and not getting anything. So I figured out, you hear that? It's the brights clicking. 
key. Yeah, technically you're supposed to unhook your battery. First thing you ever do, but I do trial by fire, so I blow something up, and then something else from any fix. But uh, so far, so good. Only had that happen once when working on the brake lights, and then realized that it did burn out a fuse or a bulb or something. Okay, so in my bus, I've got, I think it's called a 12 panel uh, fuse relay, and then I've got this, you know, up top are your little blinker flashers and so forth. Uh, but when I did get up in here, I found, you can see this one right coming in front of the yellow, is the brown and white that I was missing. So I pulled it and found it was separated. Got the little twisties, twisted them back together. Um, and the little caps that you saw in there. Uh, I like to use those instead of the electrical tape that I've been using, because that's probably why it came off to start with. Um, otherwise, I had gone through and tried to use my horn. Um, I realized that there's supposed to be a wire on the bottom that connects to this post. And when you come up, the post touches up in here. And then when you push the horn, it pushes it down and makes the connection with the little spring that's in here. So all I did was I pulled a wire out, um, just made my own wire, hooked it to the horn, came up here and touched it, knew my horn was working, touched it to the brass inside, then I touched it to this metal post, what it's supposed to go through, and then push the horn, beep, 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 and I got it. So I just ran my wire up to the floorboard instead of replacing my steering column. And uh, as you can see, I coiled it around. Could paint it black if I wanted to. And then I stuck it up through here, taped it down, and I'll turn the key on. That's my boy. Okay, well maybe it's not currently functional. Huh. Okay, well I've done something to mess it up. <laughs> Either way. Um, got under here found the little five panel that's a six panel connector. Uh, so yeah, black and white goes through, comes out to the black and white. You can follow your wiring chart to figure out where that goes. And usually I start from one end and run to the other. And a lot of times with these old cars you'll find something that's, like I said, it was, uh, you know, electrically taped on, came pulled off, or, yeah, there's my little cap. Um, Maybe one of these fell off or something more. It's just simply unplugged. Uh, the initial problem I had when I got the bus was that I couldn't crank it all the time. And then I started blowing the fuse out. And I looked at number two, figured out what it was. Ran down all the wires, couldn't figure anything out. So I finally pulled the fuse panel itself out. And found a just straight blue wire, kind of like that one. And then realized it didn't go anywhere. And since I have the camp mobile. It goes to the sink, which is logical, blue for water, for the little pump. And the wire was still just sticking out of a hole here, so if I stopped abruptly, the wire would come and make contact and short out. So when I realized that that blue wire was my problem, I just unplugged it from the fuse panel, and then, miraculously, I never had any problems. But I'd been to three mechanics all wanting to charge me for different things. One guy paint and charging me for towing it there and then telling me that I was out of fuel. Um, so I've learned to do my own wiring. Uh, the other problem was that my little light up here didn't work and me and my brother ran through the wiring guide and figured out that the um, little buzzer here has a ground in it and if that ground is connected and missed somewhere else it just won't work so we just unplugged it, which I think is the buzzer ground, and so when I guess when the button comes open, you get your buzzer when the key's on. Um, we just unplugged that and never had any problem, but a lot of your stuff actually goes through that. Your grounding is seriously uh, serious in the bus, but uh, a lot of times I, I find my ground problems and fix them. Uh, you can use a tester light, you know, like with stuff like this where it's not already connected, just clip the alligator clip on there and then touch it and see if you get a connection and usually you can figure out a lot of problems. I went through my light switch here and I almost bought a new one of these until I realized it was the switch running through and I saved myself the money and trouble of that. It was about a hundred dollars for another switch. Um, so once I did that I figured out that 
you know, the problem was in here, I unplugged it, pulled it out, and it had melted together. So, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder these together, and I should have it back together. But I think the initial problem was, is that the two holes there are supposed to screw the, the switch itself in place so it doesn't move around. They'd come off, so it was just, you know, floating in there, and eventually it just broke those wires and I couldn't even turn the switch anymore, it was just flopping inside it. And I thought it was broken completely, <clears throat> realized that was there. So I just found two screws in my bag, and I'm going to use them, they work out good. Um, would be nice if this was a harness, like what's here. But throughout the rest of the bus, the harnesses have lots of wires, and they can cost you a lot of money to replace. Which, like the Bug Me video shows you how to do it, but instead of doing all that, I ran around, found places where like my tail lights had been hog pinned together and after running out my own wire from where it's supposed to go, you know, looking at the diagram, you know, you say, well, it's supposed to connect here and eventually connect over there. So I put little connectors on my, my, you know, own wire. I'll just make a wire, make it nice and long, and then I'll clip it where it's supposed to go, clip it somewhere else and see if I get it. And I found out that these wires, sometimes you'll find the harness and it'll be melted in the spot. And if you crack it open, you can see where one wire, which is why you're supposed to disconnect your battery when you're working on this stuff, because it'll overheat, melt, fray, you no longer have it. The other problem is, is it may melt the next wire next to it, and you've got two problems. So it will save you a lot of headache if you do unplug your battery before you do any electrical work. Um, then when you've played with what you want or you've gotten it out to this point where it's loose you still need to be cautious because these wires are hot and will just melt to that or burn it out and which is what I'm thinking happened to this guy I had played with it pulled it out put it back in and then when I turned it on I think something was touching and you know it smoked after a while um, so you go through it step by step you know, chase down your problems. A lot of times it will be in your harness. Um, otherwise, it may just be somebody else's bad wiring job that they were trying to do. Um, a lot of the things in there didn't make any sense. I had where your brake booster goes or your brakes, you know, where they connect. Um, there's two little circuits in there. And they're just, I guess, when you depress your brakes, it tells to turn your brake lights on. And one of those had burnt out in the harness somewhere so this guy just came across and hooked him in but he did it all wrong so I went back pulled out his wiring and made them go where they're supposed to a lot of times there's a relay like for my headlight switch for the dimmer switch goes through the dimmer relay then the dimmer relay goes through the headlight then comes back around into there so if somebody cuts shortcuts somewhere then you're gonna have a problem so you wanna make sure I mean it looks crazy but it's not that hard once you start paying attention, I mean, your alternator has three wires coming out of it. Once you know where they go, one's a ground, you know, just dead ends. A lot of times, you'll just have grounds. But then the other thing is, is all your grounds may go together. Somebody may have tied them all together and screwed them down to one big screw. So where it looks like it's a dead end, it may fall off. And if you find out those grounds aren't screwed in right, or any one of them is touching metal, anything like that, you're going to have problems. So... It may look complex, it may seem unbearable, but it is usually pretty simple. It's just a matter of taking the time to do it. Rather than going through three mechanics or more, because then none of them fixed it, and paying all that money to have them never fix it either. Or paying somebody, you know, gobs of money to sit there and take the time to do this themselves. Uh, which they may not know that much, or they may be amazing and geniuses, but either way you're paying for it. So I've simply spent about an hour here to figure out that... You know, not only was it my screw that was messing me up, but, you know, and I've also rebuilt this thing myself before, trying to fix parts, um, you know, and then I got to hook my horn back up. I know that once I hook these two, after testing it myself, I know that everything should work, but then, I'll show you here, go ahead and turn the blinker, I'm going to touch my wire where it belongs, not the wrong place, and see my blinker's going really fast, that's my tail light wiggles and sometimes I just gotta go back there and wiggle it again something I probably need to fix but when my tail light grounds into itself and then heads over to the other places sometimes it'll wiggle loose 
and when it's not making that connection there I think it's just getting too much going the rest of the, it's, it's a shortcut basically and so when I wiggle it back into place and get it secure then not only do I get my right blinker but I also get a steady blink so some things like that like the idiot's guide will tell you listen to your car you know it's kind of the same with electric if something's doing something you don't recognize or it's being weird you know like uh, one of the idiot guide things is when you turn it on you should get both those lights um, then when you crank it up you know you should only have this one for a second then when you rev it you know and it'll run your alternator and that should go out but uh you know like my little lights in here you know the bright ones only comes on whatever but when you look in the back a lot of these lights twist in and when they twist in is when they ground so if they just jiggle loose you're not going to get that ground and then you may have other things acting funny and there's a lot of you know deduction work here but I've also hooked up my stereo and that took a bit of you know figuring out how to take an old school system and hook it into the new school and then you can tell I've got wires down there that are just running to the floorboard. Uh, I've also hooked in my own um, cigarette lighter down there. I just kind of screwed it to the plate. Um, my ground is actually the wall there. I just electrically taped my ground to the wall. Um, as long as you're, everything's connected to the chassis and the chassis is connected to the negative battery, you know, anywhere in your body should technically be a ground. I have also put in an auxiliary battery that comes out the back. I had to hook in a relay I found online on eBay for 99 cents. Um, took me a little work and run around um, on the internet, the Sambo, to figure that one out. But then once I figured out how it works, it worked. And then I just used alligator clamps to hook in a little cigarette lighter in there. And I've got also a uh, little converter that you can buy at the auto parts store and plug that in. I've got lights. Um, technically, I could do my soldering right here right now. A little fan. Um, in my toolbox. Uh, I've got rope light that goes around up in the top. And you know we got a little bit of luxury, not too much going on, but if I wanted it heavier duty I could do it. Um, everything's kind of just you know trial by fire with these old things. You'll find something that you never thought would have been the problem and then when you get it and you figure it out you feel pretty proud of yourself and you saved yourself probably hundreds of dollars. So. Um, when you come across stuff like this where there's not enough wires, you may just have the wrong part. You got something that, you know, like my headlight switch, it's supposed to be 30, 53A, 31B, 53, you know, it's got numbers, parts to it where each individual wire goes in. It's to label it. Um, but when I pulled the new headlight switch out and compared it to the old one, the old one had different numbers. Some things were plugged in there, numbers that didn't sound right. I tried to use the Bentleys to see which other years it came from. Um, eventually I just kind of gave up and said, well obviously it's the wrong one, that's probably why it burned out. So it's it's definitely worth going through your stuff yourself because you'll find other things that you, know, you didn't expect. Things you may start to learn to recognize and you can fix before they become problems like what I'm doing now. Um, you know, regular checkups and things like that. I mean like another thing that doesn't work is my I mean, the light lights up, but, you know, my rear defroster, I do have them. It's open right now, but, you know, maybe those wires you can see in the top corner up there is where the ground is. It just screws into the body there. I mean, maybe that ground wire is screwed up. You know, there's just lots of things to look at. Um, I'm going to give you a sorry, jiggle around here. Let's see. Old crusty wire that goes in there, and then it goes through here, comes in there. And anywhere some old, you know... Like say the rubber that's supposed to protect it is eroded, then you may not have what you need. Uh, right here is my ground for most things. I grounded my relay for the external battery. I grounded it right there. Then I ran one wire to the positive terminal. And that's another thing. If you look, this is not my negative terminal. That's my positive terminal. But I guess they bought one that was short. And the black one must have been long, so they switched them. No. That's something that could have caused me a big headache if I didn't know to start with, but obviously there's a red wire coming out of there that goes to the alternator, the starter, I believe, and different things that kind of gave it away, plus if you looked at it, you know, you could tell, but, um, I mean, those can be big problems. Um, I took my relay wires, put them up over here, and strapped them in. Another problem I had had was in the harness here that this wire was busted. I didn't have my lights to be legal. 
So I ran another yellow wire. I mean, it would be best if you could find a color or spray paint it or mark it, put, you know, uh, masking tape on there and label it or something. But, you know, I found out that the wires up inside there were messed up. Made my new wire, and now I have that. Um, come over here. Uh, I'm not sure that went to something else that doesn't exist anymore, but there's another grounding spot here. There's my alligator clamps to run it, and there's the wires that go to the other battery to charge it while I'm driving. Um, the lights back here all seem secure. I don't have any problems back there. But the ones here is what I was talking about. It pulls and wiggles. And it's probably something I could replace and save myself a lot of trouble. Another thing was is where the guy had hog pinned everything. It was crazy. I ended up just finding that the original grounding spot or whatever where the screw goes in was broken off. So I just used the alligator clamp to clamp it to it. And I haven't had any problem with that. And then I just clamp it to where it's supposed to ground. That's my grounding. It's supposed to clip into it, but it's broken off so it doesn't clip in. But um, and there's quick fixes. Things like this. And you'll start looking through your wiring diagram. That went to side markers that I no longer have. Um, they would be live. But, you know, unless I'm touching the body and touching that myself, I'm not going to have any problems. But, yeah, it would be a good idea to... Um, Actually, I think this is the ground wire, so that's no worries. But here's one that came out. Uh, just cut the wires off the end of it so it doesn't sit there and short out. You know, there you go. You got another problem to chase down. So, I mean, when you find stuff like this, you should secure it, fix it, and you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. But with these old cars, they've got the color coding. Each year is probably a little bit different. And then when people start making changes to your engine compartment switching over to an alternator or you know got a new choke automatic choke or you know a different type of ignition system ow everything is damn hot in here I should probably turn the key off um yeah i mean that things like that where something's hot probably means you got a grounding problem so maybe i'm screwing something up by not having this hooked together so all right, um, got any questions, leave a comment. Otherwise, I hope this helped. Maybe get you interested in doing your own electrical work and give you a couple simple hints. Uh, Idiot's Guide, Bentley's Guide, and the Samba.com. S-A-M-B. Well, it's T-H-E-S-A-M-B-A. The Samba. All right, guys, take care.